who was the richest man in history, how he get rich, how much wealth and power he has, what are the source income, what's so interesting about richest man in history, the insane story behind richest man in history. Mansa Musa was the ruler of the Kingdom of Mali from 1312 to 1337 during his reign. Mali was one of the richest kingdoms of Africa, and Mansa Musa was among the richest individuals in the world. The ancient Kingdom of Mali spread across parts of modern-day Mali, Senegal, the Gambia, Guinea, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Mauritania, and Burkina Faso. Mansa Musa developed cities like Timbuktu and Gao into important cultural centers. He also brought architects from the Middle East and across Africa to design new buildings for his cities. Mansa Musa turned the Kingdom of Mali into a sophisticated center of learning in the Islamic world. Mansa Musa came to power in 1312, after the previous king, Abu Bakr I, I disappeared at sea. Mansa Abu Bakr I, I had departed on a large fleet of ships to explore the Atlantic Ocean and never returned. Mansa Musa inherited a kingdom that was already wealthy, but his work in expanding trade made Mali the wealthiest kingdom in Africa. His riches came from mining significant salt and gold deposits in the Mali Kingdom. Elephant ivory was another major source of wealth. When Mansa Musa went on a pilgrimage Hajj to Mecca in 1324, his journey through Egypt caused quite a stir. The Kingdom of Mali was relatively unknown outside of West Africa until this event. Arab writers from the time said that he traveled with an entourage of tens of thousands of people and dozens of camels, each carrying 136 kilograms, 300 pounds of gold. While in Cairo, Mansa Musa met with the Sultan of Egypt and his caravan spent and gave away so much gold that the overall value of gold decreased in Egypt for the next 12 years. Stories of his fabulous wealth even reached Europe. The Catalan Atlas, created in 1375 by Spanish cartographers, shows West Africa dominated by a depiction of Mansa Musa sitting on a throne, holding a nugget of gold in one hand and a golden staff in the other. After the publication of this atlas, Mansa Musa became cemented in the global imagination as a figure of stupendous wealth. After his return from Mecca, Mansa Musa began to revitalize cities in his kingdom. He built mosques and large public buildings in cities like Gao and most famously Timbuktu. Timbuktu became a major Islamic university center during the 14th century due to Mansa Musa's developments. Mansa Musa brought architects and scholars from across the Islamic world into his kingdom, and the reputation of the Mali kingdom grew. The kingdom of Mali reached its greatest extent around the same time, a bustling, wealthy kingdom thanks to Mansa Musa's expansion and administration. Mansa Musa died in 1337 and was succeeded by his sons. His skillful administration left his empire well off at the time of his death, but eventually the empire fell apart. Well, after his death, Mansa Musa remained ingrained in the imagination of the world as a symbol of fabulous wealth. However, his riches are only one part of his legacy, and he is also remembered for his Islamic faith, promotion of scholarship, and patronage of culture in Mali. Did Mansa Musa go to America? The predecessor of Mansa Musa, a wealthy king of the Mali Empire, allegedly left home to explore the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. The idea that he may have discovered the Americas well before Christopher Columbus captures the Americas. But historians doubt Mali had the technology to carry out such a voyage. Mansa Musa, however, helped introduce West Africa to the world. What was Mansa Musa famous for? Mansa Musa, also known as Musa Kid I, was a renowned king of the Mali Empire who reigned from 1312 to 1337. He is often remembered for his immense wealth and lavish spending during his pilgrimage to Mecca which made him one of the richest people in history. Mansa Musa was able to accumulate his wealth largely due to the significant gold reserves of the Mali Empire, which was one of the largest producers of gold in the world at the time. The empire controlled several important gold mines, including the famous Sadiola and Lula mines. In addition to gold, Mali was also a major producer of other valuable commodities, such as salt and ivory. These resources were traded extensively throughout the empire and beyond, creating a flourishing economy. Mansa Musa's reign coincided with a period of great prosperity for the Mali Empire, which greatly enhanced his wealth and power. He also encouraged trade and commerce, which further increased the empire's wealth. Finally, Mansa Musa's famous pilgrimage to Mecca, which he undertook in 1324, also helped to boost his reputation and wealth. During his journey, he distributed huge amounts of gold to the people he met, establishing himself as a generous and wealthy king. This act of generosity not only enhanced his reputation, but also helped to establish trade relations between Mali and other parts of the world. Mansa Musa was crowned king and it is estimated that his fortune was almost $400 billion USD, adjusted for inflation, which is still double than that of Musk and Bezos. Mansa Musa's abundant natural resources were the key areas that contributed to his wealth, gold mine to the South Bambuk, Wangora, Burur, Burur, Taza, and other kingdoms, and salt from northern regions. Musa ruled over a number of contemporary African nations, including the Ivory Coast, Senegal, Mali, and Burkina Faso. The imperial capital of Musa was Timbuktu. This emperor was known for his generosity and kindness and had been praised throughout history for his wit and judgments. 
He gave out so much Malian gold along the way that Gillis Grites don't like to praise him in their songs because they think he wasted local resources outside the empire. Lucy Duran of the School of African and Oriental Studies in London told BBC, how did Mansa Musa lose his money? With his lavish spending and generosity in Cairo, Mansa Musa ran out of money and had to borrow at high rates of interest for the return journey. Ibn Battuta says that Mansa Musa borrowed 50,000 dinars from Siraj al-Din ibn al kuwait a rich merchant from Alexandria, after he had spent all his wealth. 14th century Arab historian Shihab al-Amari wrote that Mansa Musa flooded Cairo with his benefactions. He left no court emir nor holder of a royal office without the gift of a load of gold. They spent gold until they depressed its value in Egypt and caused its price to fall. Musa is believed to have been the richest person in history, even by today's standards. His expansive kingdom included all or parts of modern-day Mauritania, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, and Chad. But Musa didn't just want wealth and power, said Casely Hayford. He sought something more. He sought knowledge. When the emperor returned from Mecca to Timbuktu, he brought back scholars and an Andalusian architect from Cairo to build a great mosque, Di Jingwerber, an architectural masterpiece and one of most iconic buildings in Africa. What made Mansa Musa a strong leader? Mansa Musa could easily be considered a great leader. He managed an efficient government through a bureaucratic system that provided each village greatly, while establishing provinces and provincial governors to handle local affairs. He established religious freedom in Mali and provided the people with a free education they were encouraged to utilize. He expanded his already vast empire, but treated the people of the newly acquired lands fairly. He threw new relationships with Muslim leaders throughout the world. He increased trade between Mali and the nations of Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Europe and Asia. The wealth he brought on his Hajj to Mecca ensured that rulers throughout the world would know of Mali's wealth and establish the country as a commercial and cultural center in the 13th and 14th centuries. Who was the richest person ever? The richest person ever is thought to have been an emperor with an accumulation of wealth often described as unimaginable or incalculable. The title goes to 14th century African emperor Mansa Musa, and his wealth has been estimated to be the modern day equivalent of $400 billion. Musa ruled the Mali empire beginning in 1312, at a time where gold and salt resources helped the empire expand and flourish. Musa and the empire owned almost half of the old world's gold, BBC reports. Musa is credited for funding and encouraging literature, education, architecture, and the arts. According to history, Musa showed the true size of his wealth on a pilgrimage to Mecca, surrounded by tens of thousands of soldiers and slaves carrying mass amounts of gold. He left behind gifts of gold as he crossed through Egypt, a gift generous in thought, but not in actuality. The precious resource actually decreased the value of metal and had a disastrous impact on the economy for over a decade. What did Mansa Musa teach us? Mansa Musa died in 1337 and was succeeded by his sons. His skillful administration left his empire well off at the time of his death, but eventually the empire fell apart. Well after his death, Mansa Musa remained ingrained in the imagination of the world as a symbol of fabulous wealth. Mansa Musa understood the intricacies of economics. His generous gifts of gold during his travels affected economies, but back home, he maintained a stable and prosperous state. Lesson, while generosity is virtuous, a leader must balance it with sound economic foresight. 